Welcome everyone to our second episode of Be Well Saturdays. I'm Gina Simmering, your host, and delighted to share monthly health and wellness information from our Boulder Community Health Physicians and a variety of wonderful community partners. Today, we're gonna to hear about developing resiliency with exercise, core strengthening exercises to keep our backs healthy, tips on nutrition for stress support, and meditation on the trail. At the end of today's episode, there will be the opportunity to win a haircut style and some fun products from Be Gorgeous Salon in Boulder. So stay with us. Let's get started. Hi everybody. So good to see you on this Saturday morning. I'm Nelson Trujillo and uh, I'm a cardiologist here in Boulder and uh, work at Boulder Community Health at Boulder Heart. And uh, it is always so exciting to come together on Saturday mornings to be with everybody. Um, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about resilience um, and how, uh, how we can develop resilience and strengthen our resilience. Uh, there's no better time to talk about this uh, as we're coming through this difficult time and all that's going on around us. And so I thought it would be good to talk about how um, each of the different people you're going to see here this morning um, are going to offer tools in our toolbox uh, to develop resilience. So the first thing I thought I'd do is just talk a little bit about what resilience is. Um, I like to think about it as how I weather a storm. Um, we can't avoid storms, um, but how we get through them can be quite different. Um, and we know from lots of uh, really carefully done work that uh, being resilient um, makes us healthier. Um, it also uh, can help us stay well going forward. And so uh, it's a, it's a a characteristic for all of us that um, we can make better over time. Um, a lot of us uh, were born resilient, um, so there is some genetic component to that, but a lot depends on how we grew up, um, what our experiences have been uh, during traumatic times. Um, uh, but we also know that we can make things better, um, and so if we weren't that resilient when we were younger, we can become more resilient uh, as we grow older, and there's never a time when we can't uh, keep developing that flexibility. So with that in mind, um, I thought I would talk about some of the things that we can do uh, that make us, uh, can make us more resilient. Um, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is self-care. Um, so taking care of ourselves, uh, both mentally and physically and spiritually, are a way to develop resilience. Um, today, we're going to uh, hear from Kate about stretching. Um, we're going to hear a little bit about uh, being out in nature uh, and meditation out there. And these are ways to cultivate both our physical strength um, and our spiritual strength. Uh, and that will help us be more resilient. We'll weather this storm better. Um, walking is a huge way to develop resilience. It sort of incorporates a lot of these things. Um, we get outside, we walk, we get our blood pumping, we can feel our heart strengthening. It develops a sense of optimism. We're out doing something. All these things can strengthen our resilience. Um, depending on where we walk, um, uh, our environment will help strengthen our resilience. Um, and so getting out every day, a good 20 minutes, uh, really will make us more flexible, especially during this trying time. We know that um, a sense of spirituality, not necessarily religious, but uh, a sense of things greater than ourselves can help us be more resilient. Um, and we're gonna learn a little bit today about how nature can do that for us. Uh, we might find that comfort of things greater than ourselves when we eat. I know I do. Um, when you make a salad or are cooking, um, we, we have gratitude for where our food came from and appreciate the fact that um, it came from uh, nature and out in our community. And so those things are greater than ourselves. And, um, developing that kind of gratitude um, can really help us become more resilient. Um, we know that community can be huge in, in cultivating resilience. Um, and we have our hometown community, which we're here today to celebrate. Uh, when we're all together in person once a month out for our walk, um, our Walk with the Doc program, that's a big community. Um, and I encourage all of you to uh, start to cultivate um, community. Uh, again, um, we have been uh, 
physically isolated during this pandemic. Um, many of us have been uh, spiritually isolated. Um, it is time to start to reach out. Um, I don't like this uh, social isolation or social distancing. I like physical distancing, but we can socially come together. And this program is a great example um, of how that really works uh, in today's world. So um, I'd encourage you to join us every month um, and start to reach out to friends and family and lots of different communities out there who are getting together uh, regularly uh, to reform social groups, which again, will make us more flexible and more resilient. Um, in the end, resilience is so important. Um, how we weather the storm. Um, and there's no question it's been a doozy uh, the last couple months. And um, one of the big hallmarks of being resilient is not just weathering the storm, but growing afterwards. So there have been some um, benefits to this, uh, this trauma that we've all experienced. And that is that as a result of coming out of it, of getting back together, reinvigorating ourselves about how we eat and how we exercise, how we participate and join nature in our community, um, these things will make us more resilient. And so when the next storm comes, which it will, uh, we'll be ready. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kate, who's gonna take us through some motions. Uh, and not only are we gonna be resilient as a person, but our bodies are gonna be resilient. You go, Kate. Good morning, friends. This is Kate Hulick, Daring Fitness and Mind Body Program Coordinator with the City of Boulder Parks and Rec Department. I know it's a mouthful. Coming to you live from my basement. The baby is upstairs napping, so since he rules the house, I got relegated downstairs. So this is where we're going to go. Today, I'm going to go over three simple exercises to help stabilize and support your spine and lower back while you're in everyday movement and also while you're exercising. So first exercise is going to be a dead bug. Join me as we move to the mat. I want you to lie down on your mat or your floor or your grass, really whatever floats your boat, wherever you are. And think about drawing your belly button or your navel into your spine. You'll feel a little engagement and probably some pressure of your back into your mat. So feel that pressure. You want to hold that engagement. Bring your feet up to 90 degrees. Okay, draw the belly button into the spine and then slowly lower one heel towards the floor, thinking about keeping that contraction engaged. Don't forget to breathe. Breathing is key here. Other foot down, tap, and back up. You only want to go as far as you can keep that engagement possible. Otherwise, decrease your range of motion. Next progression, you want to make it a little more challenging. Move to a cross body position. Opposite arm and leg, same movement. Drop down towards the floor and back up. Anytime you lose that engagement, just draw that belly button back in towards the spine, move, and then come back up to neutral. Beautiful. This exercise is working our transverse abdominis. Big word, we're just gonna call it our TVA. Our TVA stabilizes and supports our spine. Think about surrounding the spine so that we can be safe in movement. So learning how to engage that muscle is key to be safe in other movements. Next progression for this exercise, some of you may have done this before, is a bird dog exercise. So draw the belly button into the spine, nice straight neutral spine here, and lift up and extend opposite arm and leg out in front of and behind you. Okay, alternate, go as slow as you can. That forces you to work a little harder and try to wobble as little as possible. I don't know about you, but me carrying around a 13 pound baby all day, every day has put a pretty big toll on my lower back. So these exercises are key in my routine right now. Next exercise, bridges, glute bridges. Now that we've learned to engage our core muscle, our deep core muscle, our TVA, we're gonna add some more movement into that with our glutes. Lie down on your back, feet about hip width apart, flat on the ground. Draw that belly button in towards your, towards your spine, hold, and then squeeze your glutes and lift up 
to full hip extension. You want a nice straight line from your shoulders all the way to your knees. Squeeze and lower back down. You can just do repetitions of this. Straight up, squeeze, and then back down. Or you can play with different tempos and bases of support. So let's go up for three. One, two, three. Hold at the top. One, two, three and back down, two, three. You can also come up to the top and practice marching, lifting one foot and then the other. Just make sure that you keep your hips level and engaged so those glutes stay engaged when you pick one foot up off the ground. Notice how I get up. I don't just pull myself up, roll to one side and press yourself up. That also protects your lower back. Last exercise. Good mornings, and it is morning, beautiful. Feet about hip width apart, shoulders down and back, gauge those shoulder blades. Again, drawing that navel in and up. So let's stabilize and strengthen our spine first, then hinge forward at the torso as you reach your hips back. Come to about a 45 degree angle, and then squeeze those glutes and come back up. So we've got multiple muscle groups working here, again, TBA, stabilizing the spine. Notice how I have a nice straight back while we let our glutes and hamstrings be our prime movers. So there you go. Three wonderful exercises to help support and stabilize your spine through all of movement, exercise, and your everyday life. Thank you for joining me this morning. I honor and respect and miss you. All right, thank you. I wanted to say thank you to Boulder Community Health for and Walk with the Doc for sponsoring and putting on this Be Well Saturday program. Um, as my name is Diane, I'm the nutritional health coach here at the Natural Grocers of Boulder, the one and only Natural Grocers of Boulder. And I wanted to take this opportunity with you all to talk a little bit about stress and how we can um, counteract it in our lives. So stress can wear us down, it can deplete us and our nutritional reserves, especially if we have a less than stellar diet, which we can all be guilty of from time to time. Now nutrients like the B vitamins, which can be considered among other things, anti-stress nutrients. Magnesium is another nutrient which can help support Neurons and muscle cells relax after they're activated. And then I also wanted to bring up vitamin C, which is really supportive of the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands are in charge of producing our stress hormones. When, so when they're taxed, they run out of vitamins. So B vitamins, magnesium, and vitamin C are all very important in times like these and all the time, really. And here at Natural Grocers, we find it important to nourish with food, but also on an emotional aspect. And so I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about how it's a good idea to spend the summertime outside grilling, inviting small numbers of people over, spending the time outdoors with lots of fresh air circulating all around rather than being indoors in close, hot and close quarters. And then including foods with lots of nutrients, very nutrient dense foods, foods like pasture based meat or whole food based grain and bean uh, veggie burgers. All of those contain lots of B vitamins to, to replenish your stores. There's also um, lots of vegetable and fruit side dishes, which will contain lots of magnesium and vitamin C to once again replenish those stores. And plus, if you include cherries and vitamin E in your grilling ingredients, it can actually help reduce the harmful compounds produced while you grill. That's right, I said cherries and vitamin E. Those both can help reduce those volatile compounds that happen when you expose your food to high temperatures and open flames. But um, before I let you go, I wanted to tell you that Natural Grocers, over the month of July, will be giving away free grills. They are Traeger pellet grills. 
And there are three different ways to enter to win. And um, plus, Natural Grocers is raising money for local food banks throughout the country at all of our locations. So hopefully you come on in to Natural Grocers, grab some of this beautiful organic produce, maybe some cherries or vitamin E to include on your grilling ingredients, and hopefully pick up a copy of our Nutritional Health Hotline for the month of July. Thanks for listening. And I turn it over to David. Well, first and foremost, thanks so much for every, to everybody for being here on this Saturday and for being with us. Quite honestly, like even though we're on the other side of the camera and the screen, it just feels like we can at least be with one another during this time. Um, my name is David Ford. I work for the City of Boulder's Open Space and Mountain Parks, and I serve the community as the recreation coordinator uh, for the system. And as a guide, a lot of times, I've always done these A to B big hikes, uh, keeping people safe and really working on these phenomenal destinations. Um, but today I wanted to speak um, a lot to the meditation and mindfulness on the trails and just how if we, I hope that we all know that feeling of when we come back down from a hike or a climb or some time in nature, just that feeling of, uh, of re how, how relaxed we can feel and at peace. Um, but a lot of times uh, we don't necessarily have time for a big hike or we don't we we have our headphones in we're walking on the trail and we're not fully immersed in our surroundings and so what i hope that we can start doing um, is to start you know unplugging a little bit dedicating some time outdoors and really completely immersing ourselves to connect with the surrounding environment um, and getting to some healthy spaces as well so and what i mean by that is that the ecosystem's health, um, the higher that health is, uh, the more health benefits we also receive. So there's that correlation too, and the importance of ecosystem health is absolutely critical um, to our own as well. Um, and so with this thought of meditation on the trails, um, there's so many times that I've been out that I just will simply stay put and just listen to my surroundings and uh, and try to figure out well, what's going to appear. And sometimes, you know, a bird call might change from that, um, the, the warning call, warning everybody else around about my presence. And then it turns to kind of a who are you? And then it eventually changes to that sing song. So give yourself that 10 to 15 minutes to allow wildlife to settle to your presence. And I, I guarantee you, it's pretty amazing what will happen out there. It's absolutely incredible, just the connections with the plants, the animals, and uh, just the other life there um, around you. Um, and so take some time to do that. A lot of times when we think about meditation and mindfulness, we literally, we just think about sitting in a room or something with our eyes closed, with a big gong in the background or something. But it doesn't have to be just that. It can also be just that mindful presence, that full presence uh, and that moment that, that you have where you're connecting with yourself and the surroundings around you. Some of my favorite places that I've been going to uh, recently have been on top of Flagstaff Mountain here in, in, in West Boulder. Flagstaff Mountain, it's this neat windy road, kind of an adventure to get on up there. And at the top, if you go to the, um, the summit center up there near, near one of our nature centers, there's a little trail called the Boy Scout Trail. And if you get to um, kind of a midpoint of that, there's uh, this viewpoint called Maze Point. And that is a very low um, access trail. So not a lot of people are up there, so you can really immerse yourself. It also is surrounded by a habitat conservation area. Um, and so you really, it has a lot of these plants and animals that are pretty rare and gives yourself that silent chance. Um, if you don't have a car or need a place a little bit more accessible, I really enjoy the McClintock Trail right, right near the Chautauqua um, lawn. The McClintock Trailhead is, is there. It's not a lot of effort to get to. And uh, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, there's a free shuttle that'll take you from downtown 
uh, to that to this location here at Chautauqua. Um, so you can definitely take advantage of that. Um, visit osmptrails.org. Um, get to one of these spots, explore new areas, and uh, while you're out, just take some time for yourself and for the animals around you just to settle down and get that sense of place. You really deserve it, and, uh, and so does all the life around you. So take care, good care of yourself, get outside, um, get away from the screens for at least a little bit every day, and we're there with you. So search us, um, ask us any questions that you need, we're there for you. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much to this fabulous panel of speakers and thank you to our audience for joining us. Uh, we learned so much today in such a short amount of time on how to stay healthy and well. Um, if there are particular topics that you would like us to address, feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is listed below. Um, and are you ready now to win that much needed haircut, David? No, I'm kidding. Um, be the first to email me with the answer to this question and you'll be the winner. So here goes. What does good self-care with walking, eating well, stretching, and being in nature do for us? Be the first one to send me the answer to that question and you will be the winner. So until next time, stay healthy and be well. Be well, stay healthy everyone. <laughs>